Hi guys, Jeff Morrow here for Stella Artois Sessions at Home to show you some fantastic tips to help you make restaurant quality dishes in your own kitchen. I'm also gonna show you a way to help Stella provide relief to your favorite local restaurants and chefs. Join Stella Artois in helping your favorite restaurants by purchasing a gift card at helpmainstreet.com backslash tables for tomorrow. Meanwhile, Stella Artois is funding relief grants through the James Beard Foundation for restaurants and chefs across the country. All right, guys, I'm about to make for you one of my favorite sandwiches of all time. I am the Sandwich King. It is time to make the most monumental sandwich you have ever seen. This is one is so near and dear to me. It is a classic, a Chicago classic, a fried meatball sandwich. Let's get started with a meatball, but we're just gonna use beef because my mom, Pam, only use beef. But if you get good ground chuck, 70, 30, 80, 20, right? Good fat content in there, it's gonna be a juicy bite. This is a word to the wise out there. If you're ever making meatballs and you just got some stuff that you're pulling from the fridge and throwing it together, remember, one egg per pound of meat. This is my little secret trick, which we're gonna start with, butter crackers. This was actually my grandma Kay's bowl. It's just beautiful. So I think everything that's made in here tastes that much better. This is just super flavorful breadcrumbs once you kind of crush it up and that's all we're gonna do. So we're taking it right out of the pack. So we are gonna literally crush with our hands about a cup of these. Don't get too crazy because now we're gonna make a panade. That is a chef's secret to making great, super tender meatballs that you don't bounce off the counter and onto the walls like a super ball. This is how you make them super silky, right? And that is to add about anywhere from a half a cup to two thirds of a cup of whole milk, right? Not the time for the skim. And this is gonna interact with that crushed cracker and make almost like a paste. In French, it's called a panade, the milk and the breadcrumb, which each bite down is perfectly tender. So we're gonna add that up. Next, we're gonna add our cheese. I prefer the Pecorino Romano only. So I grated this fresh. So this is gonna sit for a minute so that milk saturates inside those butter crackers, but not too long is to become like liquidy. About a minute or two is all it takes. You smell the buttery flavor from those crackers and all the salt in there. Speaking of salt, look at that. Here we go, it's a little salt and pepper in there right now. Great, so we got this ready to go. We could crack two eggs, remember, one egg per pound of meat. So just two large eggs, goes right in there. Easy breezy, mix it up. So about two cloves of garlic, grated on the rasp. So you taste the garlic in each bite, but you don't necessarily see chunks of garlic in there. It's magical. Mix it up. Last but not least, it's just parsley. We could just kind of take that fresh parsley and shave it right off the stem. And we're just gonna stack it up and zip through it about a quarter of a cup of that parsley. There you go. Right into the wets there. All right, let's mix the wets with the beef. This is fresh ground chuck, okay? You can go sirloin and go leaner. Chuck is the best, it gives you the most fat. And I know fat could be a dangerous word, but man, in this case, you need that succulence in each bite. So this literally goes right in there and we could start mixing it up. Now the key to any great meatball, do not over mix it. Just mix it till it's all combined and don't go any further. While we're mixing this, I'm actually gonna start my pan here in the back to about a medium high. I got a lid on deck, okay? Cause we are gonna cover it to help kind of crisp up that bottom while cooking the interior. Okay, these are so good to go. All right, it is time to make a couple patties here. Now these you can make into tiny meatballs, medium meatballs, but we're gonna fry them, make them into patties. I got some gloves here. I got my cast iron skillet back here, which provides the greatest crust onto any meatball or meat. Holds everything in there about medium heat. You can see it start to smoke a little bit. I'm gonna add a little olive oil. Just give it, you know, a little nonstick assistance. Now, how do you know what size to put your patties in? And this is a Sandwich King tip for you, okay? It's all about the ratios. I got these beautiful fresh ciabatta rolls, right? Which is like, I like to call it an Italian English muffin. It's got all those kind of nooks and crannies in there that soak up all that juice from that meatball. So I'm gonna make it a little bigger than this so when you do shrink up that patty after cooking it, it's that perfect sandwich meat to cheese to bread ratio. And that's what we're always looking for in great sandwich artistry. So we're gonna do my burger method, right? Just kind of taking 
that patty and making it not so thick, not so thin, and just a little bigger than that bun. Perfect, look at that. Now this is going right on that hot oil. Who is it sizzling? So we're gonna do two patties, and now once it's in the pan, smash it down just a little bit to make sure that surface area's got the most amount of contact to that pan. And now we could take our cover and cover it, make sure it's at a medium, and listen to the sizzle. So these guys are gonna go about five, six minutes aside, depending on the thickness. Let's start on our bread. So I'm gonna put my broiler on in the oven right now. If your bread, you bought it from the store and it might be a little past due, or if it's the freshest bread on the planet, it deserves a little bit of treatment. A little butter, a little oil, and a little heat. Reinvigorate the bread. So we're gonna use this ciabatta, cut it in half, and actually just drizzle it with a little bit of olive oil. This way, that fat in there is gonna help toast beautifully in that oven. Grab your brush. All right, we can put this in the broiler just for a couple minutes to help toast it up. Keep an eye on that. Broilers work quickly. All right, let's check our meat. Ooh, you smell that, huh? You smell what Jeff's cooking? Don't be jealous now, you can do this too. But I'm gonna show you what we're looking for once we flip this color here, that caramelization, that Maillard effect, all right? Where the exterior of the meat and the natural sugars in there caramelize and give you that crispness, that golden brown deliciousness and just make every bite give a little crunch and super succulent. You don't wanna press it down, but what we can do is grab our cheese. Now this is the time for that log of fresh mozzarella, and we are gonna to top it like that. And while that other side cooks, we're gonna cover it and help melt that cheese. All right, we put the lid on that. Let's wait for our cheese to melt and our meatballs to cook perfectly. It is time for a Stella break, because I deserved it. I'm frying meatballs, it's exhausting. You saw me mix that meatball. Mm. Oh, that's good. Let's check our bread. My nose knows it's ready. Now this, my friends, is what we're looking for. That oil makes it super soft in the middle, but toast around the edges. Really an inviting canvas for that smashed fried meatball. Let's check those meatballs, see what's doing. Oh, these are gorge. And the most accurate way to see if any meat is done, whether it's a burger or a meatball, is to check the internal temperature. So you should always invest in a nice instant read thermometer. And if we take this to 165, 170, we are in perfection land. We are there, 165 perfecto. Shut the heat off on there. So let's get our plates ready here. And the only thing that's missing from a traditional meatball sub that we're not putting directly on the sandwich is a little sidecar, your favorite marinara sauce, your jarred sauce, if you're so into it. Nothing wrong with it. There's some great ones out there right now. Got my hot jardinera, hot peppers. This is a Chicago staple. You find this on every table, every fridge, every store, every deli in the Chicagoland area. So let's take the first one we did. Perfect ratio, meat, cheese to bread. Let it rest a minute, okay? We don't wanna cut into it and have all those juices kind of slip out of there. Here we go, look at that beautiful, oily, shiny jardinier. Goes right on top. And this just kind of adds a little pop of heat. And that is that. We can close the lid on this puppy, cut into it, and take a bite. Now this might be a good sandwich to not cut into, but I gotta see the cross section. That's beautiful. Look at all that beautiful drippage of cheese. We're gonna have a nice little cheese pull, hopefully. We got the peppers in there, that perfectly treated bread. That's the best meatball sandwich I've ever made. And I've been making them for a long time. Well, there you have it, right? An homage to the heritage of a great meatball made by my family for generations in a new form with a couple new twists and turns to it to make it my own. Cheers to the heritage of Stella Artois as well. Salud. I encourage you to head over to helpmainstreet.com backslash tables for tomorrow to purchase a gift card for your favorite local restaurants, okay, to help support the chefs, the cooks, everybody there right now in this time of need. Meanwhile, Stella Artois is funding relief grants through the James Beard Foundation to help restaurants across the country. So all it takes a little bit, we can hopefully get right back to normal 
very soon. Thank you guys for joining me. Salute.